Welcome to the third lecture on central force. In this video, I am going to prove two important characteristics of central force. One is central force field is a conservative force field. Second one is energy is conserved in central force field. We have already seen the concept of central force in one of the previous video. And there we have seen that central force is always directed towards or away from a fixed point which we call center and its magnitude is function of distance, right? Therefore, central force vector F can be written as some function of distance into R cap, where R cap is the unit vector along line joining the center and the point of interest. Now, R cap can be simply written as some R vector divided by R, where R is the magnitude of R vector. Therefore, this capital F divided by R can be written as some other function of distance, which is let's say a small fr. Okay. Now just take the curl of this force, curl of F, and just we need to evaluate it. We need to apply the usual rules to find out the curl. As we know, R vector is xi cap plus yj cap plus zk cap, and this small f is function of r which is also a scalar quantity so if you multiply f with r vector then we will have fx i cap plus fyj cap plus fjk cap substitute it here evaluate this determinant so if i talk about the first step then we will get i cap multiplied by del del y operating over zf minus del del z operating over yf as we are taking the partial derivative, so when we evaluate del del y z f r, so we just need to treat x and z as constant because this is partial over y. Therefore, z and x is a constant for this case. So we can just take it out z and we will have del f del y. Similarly, and so on. The next question is how to evaluate this del f del y, del f del z, del f del x. To evaluate it, just look at the simple example del f del x we know this f is function of r therefore del f del x can be written as del f del r into del r del, del x and r square is x square plus y square plus z square so if you take a partial derivative both side with respect to x then in the left hand side you will get 2r del r del x in the right hand side you will get 2x so 2 2 will cancel and del r del x become x by r. Therefore, del f del x is x by r del f del. Similarly, you can evaluate for del f del y and del f del z. Once you got all these, you just need to substitute back. Once you substitute, you will get curl of f is equals to i cap into z y upon r del f del r minus y z upon r and so on. Now look at here, in each terms, you will have same quantity with positive and negative sign. It will cancel at tau and you will get finally curl of f is equals to zero. And if curl of any vector field is zero, that means that vector field is a conservative vector field. If in the examination you will get a question like prove that central force is conservative force field, you just need to simply show that curl of f is equals to zero. We are talking all the time conservative force. But what is the conservative force? Conservative force is a kind of force under action of which work done over a closed loop is zero. Okay. Or work done between two points is path independent. It will only depend upon the initial and final point. Okay. So what we can say that central force field is a conservative force field. The second property which I am going to talk about is the consequence of conservative force field. If a force field is conservative, then energy in that kind of force will be always conserved. So now I have already proved that central force is a conservative force. Therefore, curl of F is equals to zero. And if curl of any vector quantity is zero, then that vector quantity can be written as gradient of some scalar. So here we are choosing V as a scalar and V is nothing but potential energy. Central force F can be written as minus gradient of V. Why minus sign? Minus sign is just for our convenience. 
ओके लेट्स कैलकुलेट द वर्क डन बिटवीन टू पॉइंट सपोज अ पार्ट के लिए स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम पॉइंट ए एंड टूक दिस पाथ एंड रीच एट पॉइंट बी एंड नाउ वी नो एज आई सेड दैट कंजर्वेटिव फोर्स फील्ड मीन्स अ फोर्स अन डायरेक्शन ऑफ विच वर्क डन डज नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन द पाथ सो यू कैन चूज एनी पाथ ओके that can be easily seen from this exercise also if you want to calculate the work done in moving a particle from position a to position b then w will be integration over f dr from a to b and we are taking here the vector quantity f dot dr just simply substitute the f we have already seen f is equals to minus grad v so just substitute it here so gradient of v dot product with dr vector if we evaluate this integration it will be simply v that you already know from the definition of gradient okay and just substitute the limits you will have work done is equals to potential energy at position a minus potential energy at position b that is if you know the potential energy at two different points then work done can be simply written as the difference between the potential energy of those two points okay it is independent of path okay if you choose any other path if my drawing would be something else but the initial and final point will be a and b you will still get same work done now just try to evaluate this work done using different kind of approach so work done is f dot dr now we are going to take the root of second law of motion from second law of motion f can be written as mass into acceleration and acceleration is time rate change of velocity so f can be written as m dv dt and dr we know velocity is time rate change of position that is v vector is dr dt right so v dt can be written as dr so simply substitute f as m dv dt and dr as v dt now dt dt will cancel it out and dv dot v dot product between two vector but we know v vector and dv vector are in the same direction so if you evaluate the dot product a dot b is a b cos theta here theta is 0 so cos theta become 1 so v into dv therefore we can simply write w as m it will comes out from the integration it is a constant factor a to b dt dt will cancel and we will have v dv just simply evaluate it integration of v will be v square by 2 and if we substitute the limit then it will be half m v square at location b minus half m v square at location a okay and what is half mv square half mv square is nothing but the kinetic energy so work done is difference between the kinetic energy at final position minus initial position okay this is also known as a work energy theorem now we have calculated the work done using two different approach and just denoting it by equation 1 and equation 2 if you compare it out and rearrange the term what you will find out that kinetic energy plus potential energy at initial point is equals to kinetic energy plus potential energy at final point that is total energy is not changing and if total energy is not changing that means energy is constant or in another word energy is conserved okay so we have seen two important properties of central force field in upcoming videos i will talk about two more properties of central force field till then see you thank you